In this video, I'm going to be covering section 5-2, binomial probability distribution. So before we hit the content, let's take a look at this pre-skill. So in the pre-skill, it says a couple plants who have eight children. The number of boys possible in eight births are the following. So we can have no boys, one boy, two boys, three boys, four boys, five boys, six boys, or seven boys, or eight boys, right? So these are the number of outcomes. Uh, and then it says list the outcomes in eight births for each event below. So what do I mean by that? So number one, what are the uh, outcomes for having exactly four boys? Well, exactly four boys, well, that's just four boys, right? That's if you have exactly four boys. <clears throat> so there's only one, one outcome, one outcome, and that's if you have four boys. Uh, what about the second one? So number two, uh, so we have... Uh, less or less than four boys. So what does less than four boy means? So less than four means uh, less than four, right? Three, two, one, or zero. So that is zero, one, two, three. So that's what less than four boys mean. And again, take note, these are, this is discrete values. So um, uh, less than four means three or less only because uh, these are discrete values. And later on, when we look at continuous values, uh, less than four would be, well, less than four, which contains, uh, doesn't contain four, but then it contains anything in between like three and four, uh, as well as um, all the values less than that, right? So something like 3.4. But for now, because we're working with discrete numbers, again, discrete numbers, uh, usually whole numbers, then we're, we're looking at less than four means uh, three, two, one, and zero, right? Okay, so number three, we have at most three boys. So at most means, uh, at most three means three, um, three or less, right? So at most means three or less. So that's three, two, one, zero. So zero, one, two, three. And then, uh, <clears throat> Number four, at least one boy. So at least one means one or more, right? So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. So that's what at least one means. And then the next one says um, more than six boys. So more than six does not include six. It would mean seven or eight, right? And then the last one all boys so how can you have all boys well that's if you have eight boys so that is just eight right so there's only one outcome that um, is possible for all boys that's if you have eight boys okay so let's jump right into binomial dist probability distribution so there are four requirements to be um, to um, be considered a binomial probability distribution uh, the most important one is requirement number three. So that's the one that you want to look at primarily. It's the two category outcome. Uh, and that's where the buy comes from, right? Buy, like bicycle, a bicycle has two wheels, right? Buy. All right, so let's take a look at all four requirements. But again, the most important one is requirement number three. So requirement number one says the procedure has to have uh, a fixed number of trials. Fixed number of trials, meaning it doesn't go on forever, right? The number of trials doesn't go on forever. So for example, like if you're having kids, you're looking at the number of kids, you have a set number of trials. For example, you have eight, you're looking at eight kids. You're not looking at an infinite number of kids, right? <clears throat> number two, the requirement number two says the trials are independent. So independent, meaning one event uh, or uh, one, e one trial doesn't affect the outcome of um, another trial or the next trial. So in, independent means two events or two trials are, um, are um, not going to affect the, the probability of the next one. Number three, which is the most important uh, requirement for being a binomial probability distribution, says you know, each trial must have all outcomes classified into two categories. And I'll let you know, so if we're looking at the, the um, you know, the outcome of having kids, that is binomial because it's two categories. How many different, what, how many outcomes are possible when having a kid in each trial? 
Well, there's only two, right? You can have a boy or a girl. So that that would, um, would be two categories. And that's an example of two categories. Okay, number four, requirement number four, the probability of success remains the same in all trials. And that kind of stems from being independent, the trial, that the trials are independent, uh, but it's a little bit more than that as well. And all that says is like, um, you know, if the probability of success doesn't change uh, with from trial to trial. And success in the way that we're going to use it is arbitrary. So sometimes if, um, you know, if, some, if we're looking at the, like the, the births, like the gender of the births, sometimes males are considered success. Sometimes females are considered success. It depends on exactly what we're looking for. All right. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at these example problems. And it says determine whether the following results is result results in a binomial pr distribution. So uh, I'm I'm gonna make it easy and let's we're for this class we're only gonna check that main requirement. So the other ones are usually um, kind of given to be true. The one that you usually you have to or the one you have to check is the whether it's two categories. Okay, so A says rolling a six sided die twenty times and recording the outcome. So is that uh, binomial? So if, if we look at that main requirement, whether it's two categories, think about it. So in each outcome, how many um, possible, how many categories are there in a six, rolling a six sided die? Well, you can get a one, a two, a three, a four, or five, or a six, right? So, in other words, it's not two outcomes. It's not two categories, which means this is not binomial. All right, so uh, question B, flipping a coin 20 times and recording the outcome. Well, let's see. Uh, when you flip a coin, how many possible um, outcomes are there? Well, there's two, right? You can either get a heads or a tail. So, yes, this is binomial. Again, just for the sake of, for the sake of it, let's let's just check the other requirements as well. So, procedure has a fixed number of trials. Yes, because we're only flipping it 20 times, no more than that, right? We're not going infinite times. Uh, trials are independent. Yes, because um, each flip, it's not going to affect the probability of the next flip, right? So, let's say I flip it one time. The next time, that's whether I get a heads or a tails, it's not going to affect the, the probability of the next one. And then the probability of success remains the same in all trials. Yes, because, um, you know, uh, if we're looking, if we're considering heads to be success, the probability of heads, which is 0.5, is not going to change with each flip. So that's just what th those requirements mean. Uh, again, moving forward, we're just going to check the main requirement, which is two category outcome. Okay, so C, grading a quiz. Each question has four choices and recording the choice chosen. So recording the choice chosen, well, let's see, how many different outcomes can I record? Well, there's four choices, right? I can get a, a B, C, or D. So that's more than two outcome, which means this is not binomial. Oops. So that's not binomial. And then the last one, grading a quiz, each question having four choices, A, B, C, and D, and recording whether an answer is correct or incorrect. So these two questions are very similar, or these two problems are very similar, but the subtle difference is with the first one, I'm recording the choice chosen, A, B, C, D, and with the second one, I'm recording whether it's correct or incorrect. So because of, the, of how I'm recording uh, the choice D, correct or incorrect, two outcomes, this makes it binomial. All right, so uh, there's some notation that you have to be familiar with. So the first one is lowercase p. We denote that. We use the lowercase p to denote the probability of success. Again, success is arbitrary, right? So if we're flipping a coin and we're counting the number of heads, heads would be considered success, whereas tails would be considered a failure. And it's, it's arbitrary because we could have said we're recording the number of heads, or I'm, I'm sorry, the number of tails, and that's going to be success. Uh, so again, it's arbitrary. Uh, lowercase q is um, the letter that we're going to use to denote the probability of failure. Um, and write this down. So q is always equal to 1 minus p. 
So think about that. Let's say the probability of success was we were looking at, um, you know, the, the number of boys would be, boys would be success. So the probability of a boy, let's say, is 0.5. Then Q, the probability of a girl, would be 0.5, which is equal to 1 minus 0.5, right? Or 1 minus P. All right, uh, N is the sample size, but in this case, we're going to, we're using that to denote the number of trials. Uh, X is the specific number of success in N trials, right? And then P of X is the probability of getting exactly X successes among N trials. Okay, let's jump, go ahead and jump right into this problem here. Uh, so it says, based on a survey, assume that 74% of taxpayers filed their income tax taxes on time. Suppose we want to find the probability that when 10 randomly selected taxpayers are selected, exactly four of them file their tax, their income tax on time. Identify the values for N, P, N, X, P, and Q. So X is the specific number of successes in N trials. So in this case, exactly four of them file on time. So that filing on time would be success in this case, and then X would be four. And then N is the number of trials, is the number of selections that we make. So in this case, that's 10. And then P is the probability of success. And success in this case is if you file on time. So 74% of taxpayer file their income tax on time. So that's gonna be 0.74. And then Q would be uh, those who do not file on time. So that would be, um, and again, Q is al always equal to 1 minus P. So that's going to be <clears throat> 0.26. Okay. And if you think about it, it makes sense, right? So if, if P is the, pers uh, the probability that they file on time, then um, Q represents the probability that they don't file on time. So if 74% file on time, 26% file do not file on time. All right, let's take a look at the second problem. So second problem says a couple plans to have eight kids. <clears throat> the probability distribution for the number of boys in eight births is shown below. Use a table to determine each probability. So this is binomial. Um, again, because the main requirement, the number of outcomes is either boy, is, is two, right? Boy or girl. And so let's take a look at at um, each of these problems. So the probability of exactly one, so the probability of exactly one is 0 0.00391. Sorry, that's the probability of zero. <laughs> so the probability of exactly one would be 0 0.03125, right? That's that guy right there. Okay, and then the probability of less than four boys, well, less than four, less than four means three or and below, right? So that means the probability of less than four boys would be uh, these added together. So let's go ahead and, and add those together. Okay, so that's what we get. So 0 0.36328. Uh, and then the next one would be the probability of at least three boys. So at least three boys means three or more. So that would be adding these probabilities together. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so what we get, uh, what we get here is 0 0.85547. Uh, and then the one after that is <clears throat> the probability of more than six boys. So more than six boys would be seven or eight. So we would add those two together. And then the, the other one, the, and I'll let you guys do that one independently. So E would be at least one boy, right? At least one boy, at least one means one or more so we would that would look like that so we would add all those probabilities probabilities together so I'll go ahead and do that okay so what I get there is um, equal to 0 0.99603 so I had a I, I punched in all these numbers right I added all these numbers now there's a there's an easier way you could have done this right so in if you recognize um, again, probability distributions, the probabilities, they add up to one. So instead of adding all these numbers, what I could have done is use the complementary rule, which says, the, you know, what the probability of an event is equal to one minus its complement. So the complement of at least one, at least one is one and above, is zero. So I could have done one minus 
the probability of zero, which is 0 0.00391, which gives me the same answer. So recognizing that's going to help you a lot in this class because sometimes it's easier to find the complementary, the complement, uh, or and doing the one minus the complement, right? Okay, so um, the F, I'll let you guys do that independently. So now with this binomial distribution, I gave you guys a table with the possible number of outcomes, or I'm sorry, with the outcomes and their probability. So I gave you the probability distribution for this binomial distribution. So it's not going to be that easier. Um, you, there is a formula for um, figuring out the probability for a binomial distribution. So in other words, the formula here would calculate each of these probabilities. So for example, if I wanted to calculate the probability of zero boys out of eight births, right, because in, in, in this problem is eight, and given that the probability of boys and girls, or boys is 0.5 and the probability of girls is 0.5, I can use this formula, right? So let me work that out. So let's say, let's say I wanted to calculate, like I want to, sh I want to show you guys how I got that number. So I would go, that would be the probability, the probability of zero boys out of eight births. So n in this problem is eight, right? Eight kids total. So that's going to be eight factorial. And I'll explain what this is in a bit. So I, I should have explained it in the preschool, but I'll, I'll go ahead and explain it in a bit over n minus um, x, so again, n here is 8, n is equal to 8 and x is 0, so that's going to be 8 minus 0 factorial times 0 factorial times p, p again, p is the probability of having a boy which is 0 0.5, uh, so q is equal to 1 minus p which is also 0.5, it just happens to be both 0.5, times uh, 0, oops, 0 0.5 raised to the x power, so x again is 0, times q, which is 0 0.5 raised to the n minus x, so n is 8 minus 0, which is, is going to be 8. All right, now, first of all, I just want to tell you guys that in this class, I'm not going to require you to use the formula. I just showed you guys this formula to, to show you that that's how we get those formula. In this class, we're going to be using the TI-84, but I'm still going to explain this for those students who are curious. So um, if you want to skip this part of the explaining of the formula, you can skip it and just wait for, for this part. But for those who are curious, uh, let's tackle the factoria notation um, factorial notation first, right? The factorial notation is, uh, it just works like, the it works the following. So for example, like if I have three factorial, again, the, the question mark is how we, that's what we call factorial. Uh, that's equal to three times two times one. So something like four factorial would be four times two, three times two times one, right? And then two factorial would be two times one. So essentially what it is is, uh, like something factorial is that number times the uh, next whole number less than that number times the whole number less than that one and just keeps on diminishing one time, right? I'll multiply by, um, multiply them, right? It's the product of those. So eight factorial is eight times um, seven times six times five times four times uh, three times two times one. Right? And then this is also 8 factorial because it's 8 minus 0, so you're going to get 8 factorial. So I'm, I'm going to work this off to the side here, and I'm going to delete it afterwards. So 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then um, in the denominator, I also get 8 factorial, which is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And notice they're all going to cancel each other out. Right, and then um, the the zero factorial here. Uh, just know with zero factorial, zero factorial is equal to one. Uh, one factorial is also equal to one. Uh, it is what it is. That's that's just how. That's just what it is. Zero factorial is equal to one. One factorial is also equal to one. 
So we know that that's going to be times 1 here, because that's 0 factorial. And I'm running out of room here. But then on the right here, I have um, 0.5 factorial, I'm sorry, 0 0.5 to the 0 power. And anything to the 0 power is also equal to 1. So that's going to be times 1. And then I finally have 0.5 um, to the 8 power. And I've got to evaluate that, right? So finally, I have 0.5 to the 8 power. And this is equal to 1. This is equal to 1. So essentially, I just have to, to um, calculate that part right there. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have uh, 0.5 raised to the 8th power. And we get that. And again, that's how I got this value right here. Oops. 0 0.00391 and I rounded it to five decimal places just because I didn't want to put the entire thing it would just run off too far right so that's how I got that all right so let me show you guys how to calculate it using the TI-84 plus again this is how we're going to use this is how we're moving forward I'm just going to use the calculator the TI-84 plus to calculate I'm not going to use the formula and I don't expect you guys to use the formula either so um, there's no need for you guys to uh, memorize it. All right, so we're going to use a function called binum PDF or binum CDF. So now explain those the difference between the two. So binum PDF is where you're calculating the probability of exactly x, um, and whereas the uh, binum CDF is going to calculate the probability of x or less. Okay, and to access binum those functions <coughs> functions you're going to press second bars and then just navigate to one of these right for the TI-83 plus or the older TI-84 you're, you're gonna get a different output and I'll show you guys how it looks like but you need to input it in the following format in comma P comma X and again I'll show you guys that in a bit so for example let's say we're trying to calculate this right here where x is equal to 0, n is equal to 8, and the probability of success is 0.5. So let's calculate that. So that is the probability of exactly 0 boys in 8 births. So we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to, um, we're going to press second vars. So second vars. This is where uh, all the distribution functions is located. If you look right above the vars, there's a distra. That's uh, to access the distra, we press second vars, right? Very important for the next couple of uh, chapters that you know how to get here because we're going to be using this um, for the next couple of chapters and moving forward as well. So you got to know how to get here. Okay, so we're going to navigate to binum PDF. Again, the PDF is calculating the probability of exactly x so in this case x is 0 so we need to calculate exactly the probability of exactly 0 boys All right and then the number of trials is 8 again we're having 8 kids here p is the probability of success which is 0.5 and then x is 0 so inputting those the x the p the um, I'm sorry the n p and x like that pressing paste it would calculate, um, it would use, it would bypass this formula, right? You don't have to use this formula. You just need to do that. All right. So using, if those of you guys who have the 83 plus, you need to input it. You're, you're going to get the following. So you're going to, um, when you go to second vars and you go, it's actually easier to go up instead of down. If you go down, you can go down, but if you go up, you just go around uh, to the very top. So binum PDF, because we're calculating the probability of exactly zero. So you get an output that looks like this. So some of the, of the older TI-84s, you also get an output that looks like this. You have to input it um, as n comma p comma x. That's just the format you have to do it in, right? So n is 8, and then comma, p is 0.5, and then comma, and then x is 0. So sure enough, you can close the parentheses. If you don't, it'll recognize that you want to close it. So either way is fine. And you get the same exact answer, all right? OK, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look at uh, these formulas.
or these problems rather. So number one, when an adult is randomly selected, there is a 0 0.85 probability that the person knows what Twitter is. So find the probability that exactly three, so exactly three of the five randomly selected adults know what Twitter is. So it's good to write down the outcomes the possible outcomes or the X's, I rather the 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 X's in this case, right? So if you randomly select five people, um, you can have nobody recognizing Twitter. You can have one person, two person, three person, four person, or all five people recognizing uh, what Twitter is, right? So in this case, we're trying to find the probability of exactly three. So we're trying to find the probability of exactly three out of the five recognizing Twitter. So in a case where we're trying to find exactly like one outcome or one X, then we're going to use binum PDF, All right? So we're going to use binum PDF. So we're going to go second VARS and we're going to go to binum PDF trials. Well, the trials is um, five people is being selected. Uh, Success is if a, if, a, if a person knows what Twitter is, so the probability that they know what Twitter is is 0.85. So P is 0.85, and then X is 3. Paste, and there we go. So the probability that exactly 3 out of the 5 knows what Twitter is is that. So, and again, I'm, I'm going to round to four decimal places, but when you're working, as you're working the homework problems, please follow the round off instructions for uh, the homework. <clears throat> okay, number two. So number two, we have, uh, based on a Harris poll, 60% of adults believe in the devil. If 10 adults are randomly selected, calculate the following. So uh, A is exactly three adults believe in the devil. And B is at least two adults believe in the devil. And I'm going to add in a, a, a third problem. I'm actually going to do the third problem before the second problem. So let's say the probability of uh, at most to believe in the devil. Okay, so for the first one, we know we're going to use um, binum PDF because it's the probability of exactly three. Actually, again, let's let's write down the possible um, X's. So the possible X's would be, you can have, in 10 adults, you can have nobody, zero people believe in the devil. You can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, right? And let me just move this 10 a little bit further so you can see that it's a, it's its own uh, thing. All right, so with uh, the probability of exactly three, so that is exactly three, right? So just, that's just three. So anytime you're trying to find the probability of exactly one um, X value, then you're going to use binum PDF. So we're gonna go second vars binum pdf <clears throat> the number of trials is 10 right as we're, we're looking at um, 10 randomly selected adults probability of success success is if the person believes in the devil and that's going to be 0. 0.6 or just 0. 0.60 um, and then x would be exactly three so that's going to be three and then we're going to paste and there it is. So the probability that exactly three out of the 10 believe in the devil, uh, given that 60% of the people believe in the devil would be 0 0.0425. Again, I'm rounding to four decimal places, but please follow the round off instructions on your homework. So I'm gonna skip the at least two, and I'm gonna do the at most two first. So, uh, so the second problem is that um, the probability, or this problem says the probability that at most two of the 10 believe in the devil. Okay, so at most two means what? At most two means maximum of two and maximum of two, right? Which means two or less. So notice how in this problem, we're looking at the probability of more than one X, right? That it's, we're actually looking at the probability of two or one or zero. So if you think about that, the probability of um, you know two or one or zero, what you can do is figure out the probability of two using the binom PDF, 
and then use, uh, using the binom PDF, figure out the probability of one and then zero, and then just add those three values up, add those, those the three probabilities. But there is a function that is, uh, the, the, the binom CDF, what it does is it calculates the probability of X or less. So whatever value is, that's your X, it's gonna calculate the probability of that number or less. Uh, which in this case, we're going to input uh, two, right? So this problem, question C is a good problem to use the binom CDF. So we're gonna go second vars, and we're gonna go, instead of the PDF, we're gonna choose binom CDF. And the number of trials is 10, right? And then uh, P is gonna be 0.6. Again, success is if you believe in the devil, so that's 0.6 probability of success. X. So let me emphasize this, whatever value you input for X, the, um, this function is gonna calculate the probability of that number or below. So in this case, because we're looking at the probability of at most uh, two, uh, which is two or less, two, one, or zero, we're gonna input the two here and it's gonna calculate the probability of two and less, or two and below. So two, one, and zero, right? Which is exactly what we want here. So we're gonna click paste and we're gonna press enter. So that, that probability is, is that right there. So 0 0.0123, approximately. So now let's take a look at uh, question B. Question B says, at least two adults believe in the devil. So pay attention to this. So at least two means two or more, right? Two or more, remember, at least means that number or above. So two or more. So two, three, four, five, or six, or seven, or eight, or nine, or ten. All right, so we know that that's more than one x that we're trying to find the, the probability of, which means we're not going to use binom PDF, because binom PDF is only where we're looking at the probability of exactly one x, right? So now, can we use binom CDF? So we go second vars and bu use binom CDF. Let's let's try it. So number of trials is 10. Probability of success is 0.6. X, what are we gonna put for X? So what if we put two? What happens if we put two? Again, we're trying to find the probability of two or more. If we put two, remember, whatever value we put in here, it's gonna calculate the probability of that number or less. So if we put two there, what we're really trying, what, what, what it's gonna calculate is two or one or zero, which is not what we want. So we have a dilemma there. So what are we gonna do? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're gonna calculate the probability of, uh, we're gonna use binom CDF to calculate the probability of one or less, right? So we're gonna use the prob the, the, we're gonna use binom CDF to calculate the probability of one or less. Why is that? Because one or less is the complement of two or more. So let me repeat that. One or less is the complement of two or more. And to get the probability of two or more, all we have to do is just subtract it from one, right? Using the complementary formula. So remember, the complementary formula is says the following. So the probability of A, whatever A is, is equal to one minus the probability of A complement. So essentially what we're going to do is we're, um, A complement is zero, one or less and two or more is A, and if we calculate the probability of um, one or less, to get the probability of two or more, we just need to subtract it from one, right? So let's go ahead and, and do that. So we're inputting a one here, we're gonna click paste, and we know this is not the answer, this is actually the green part here, right? So in order to get the, the answer that we want, we need to subtract it from one. So we need to do one minus and I'm gonna go up here to highlight that, press enter to copy and paste. So the actual, the actual answer is approximately 0.9983, rounded to four decimal places. So that one's a bit tricky. So let me just kind of recap that real fast. So binom CDF, it would only calculate the probability of a number or less. So anytime you're looking for the probability of a number or more, such as in this case, You've got to calculate the probab the complement first and then subtract it from one. Here's another shortcut that you can do. So for example, let, let's just say you're, you're very experienced and you know that you're trying to calculate the probability of two or more and you know that you need to 
do the one minus eventually, right? You can do one minus and then run, uh, you can type down one minus and then run binum CDF. So watch, watch how I do this. So I'm gonna do one minus and I'm gonna calculate the probability of one or less. So I'm gonna go second vars and then binum CDF. And then number of trials is 10, 0.6 is P. And I'm gonna put one here and that's gonna calculate the probability of one or less, right? And I'm gonna go down here and paste. So what that does is it gives you the answer in one expression because you're already putting the one minus here. When you press enter, you should get the correct answer, this answer, without doing the doing the one minus the answer that you got you obtained here, right? It's just a small shortcut that you can save yourself a little time. <clears throat> All right, so for question number three, I'm actually gonna let you guys uh, do that yourself. I'm gonna end the video here. This video is getting kind of long. For the, uh, we're not quite done with uh, 5-2 yet, but in a separate video, uh, we'll complete 5-2, and we'll call that video 5-2 part two. All right, so hopefully you guys found that helpful.